MSL rave. <laughs> Everybody dance now. <laughs> Something like that. And we're on to the third set, which will be played on Circuit Breaker. Yikes, Hydra. Yikes. One game away from getting eliminated from this thing. I can't see Hydra going out without a fight, honestly. Except down at the 8 o'clock position in white, or beige, or yellow, who knows, is Hydra. When he's up at the 10 o'clock again is Flash. He loves that 10 o'clock position. Pakari Sweat. I'm the Terminator. I only drink sweat of the innocents. No, that's, that's like evil Terminator. Which I guess the first Terminator in the first movie was evil. Then he became good and stupid. And I like the second one too, whatever. But this is Circuit Breaker, a very balanced map. In fact, I'm going to put my Nuke the Stars seal of approval on this thing and call it balanced. Let's make a stamping sound. There we go. <laughs> I like how people were pointing out in one of my uh, last commentaries that, wow, Nuke sure does pound the table a lot now. And yeah, you're right. I didn't used to do that. That's kind of a new thing for me. When I get super excited, I start pounding on the table like this. It's not on the keyboard or anything dangerous. I just go you know, like that. It's just fun. And one of these days, uh, one of my waters is going to fly off. I have about six waters, half drunk waters, drunken, drunk, drunk waters on my desk. They're just going to fall into my lap. I'm going to scream like a girl, and it's going to be a very funny commentary for everyone. But all right, let's get into this game. The barracks coming up now for Flash, going straight for his barracks, and probably going to go into his command center off of this barracks, knowing Flash. This is a four-player map. After all, so we're going to see some econ builds from both. There's the hatchery coming up now for Hydra. And I would, as I said, I would give you the stats for this, but this is a balanced map, so the stats don't matter. But I will tell you who won and lost um, on this particular map. Hydra has an 8 win, 7 loss record on the map, so kind of even. He's lost about as many times as he's won. Flash also has eight wins, but he only has three losses on Circuit Breaker. So fewer losses, and that's kind of how it worked out in the on the first one, too, La Mancha, where Flash had more wins and uh, fewer losses. This time he has the same amount of wins, but f fewer losses now, too. So works out great. Flash, of course, has a great record on pretty much every map, I think. Every once in a while, uh, a map will come along that Flash doesn't understand for a while. Like, what was it? Oh, it was an OSL map. What am I thinking of? Match point. That was it. Flash had uh, such trouble for a long time figuring out that map. I think he eventually did near the end of its life. Wait, is match point still being played? I would be surprised. It might still be be played in the pro league i'm not exactly sure pro league tends to keep maps around for a very long time the individual leagues shake them out pretty quickly uh, like in the next osl i have a feeling we're going to see basically all new maps oh, i should talk about that a little bit the next osl is probably coming up pretty soon since the my star league thing is wrapping up the finals of the my star league are going on now to pick the amateur players to fight against the uh, regular pro gamers I know people are starting to look at this My Star League thing as just a scouting thing for teams, as saying uh, which players are actually good uh, that the teams will scout and try to pick up on their own. Like if KT Rolster goes in and watches a My Star League game, they might say, hmm, that Princess 2 is actually very good. But we already have Princess. Wait, is Princess on KT Rolster? I don't exactly know. I don't know where Princess is. Princess is somewhere. She's in another castle. But a bing! Thank you! Be sure to tip your waitress. I'll be here all week. But now Flash does have pretty much a full scout. What's going on inside both the bases? He sees that the second base is saturated now and not able to keep up the SCV for much longer. So he doesn't know if there's going to be a big Zergling attack or anything. He was trying to hang in long enough to see if extra Zerglings were popping out of the eggs. But I don't think he got the right information he needed. But, okay, the Zerglings are running up to the natural expansion for Flash. Flash has uh, built his second base, and he's going for a pretty similar build this time around, going for his plus one attack again to fend off Mutas. And he has his academy as well to get the stem ready. 
So, okay, let's see what Hydra can come up with now. As I said, I think Hydra needs to go for something wacky. Something wacky. I mean, when facing Flash, you should generally come up with something that he's going to be surprised about. I talked a little bit about this in the last game, obviously. You need to surprise Flash. Because his standard play is just too damn good. It's so solid. He makes the Terran race seem so imbalanced. If you watch, if you only watch Flash play, you would obviously say, well, Terran's the best race ever. But going back and watching uh, OSLs like the Ever OSL, I mean, what other Terran player was good in that OSL? What, just fantasy? I can't think of any others. So... Yeah, Flash it always does well, even when other Terran players do not. When uh, the other Terran players are embarrassing the race, Flash will still succeed. And that's why he's so good. Here come extra Zerglings now, so Hydra might actually be going for a big Zergling attacker coming in with reinforcements, pushing through. No, oh, he's deciding not to push through because he sees the medic at the front, and I think that spooked him a little. But he does have a nice big gripping of Zerglings, just in case Flash is feeling cavalier and wants to push out with those Medica Marines. This is, this is the way that Hydra does bypass uh, his static defense of the front. Instead of going for static defense, he has those Zerglings out there, which will be much more versatile for him, help him with uh, big surrounds or something. And now that Flash is moving out with his troops, uh, maybe even before the Spirit pops, he has an awful lot of troops out there, fend, out those Zer fend off the Zerglings, so I think he's waiting for a few more reinforcements before he puts a little bit more pressure on Hydra to go back to his base with the freaking Zerglings. Get out of here, Zerglings. And he has a four barracks pumping now, so Flash is going to have a lot of troops ready uh, by the time these Mutalists are coming up. And he's already working on his turrets. He has turrets everywhere. Working on those turrets and getting the stem and the plus one research at the same time. This is basically the same build that he used in the first two games. Well, a, a different... A slightly different build, but he's going for the same basic strategy of getting all of his important things popping up at the same time to take Hydra off guard. As Hydra's coming up here now, going to try to get some harassment. As Flash very quickly building turrets, as many turrets as he can muster. And now Hydra is not even going for the main or the natural expansion. He's saying, okay, i got to deal with these troops out here in the middle. And I can deal with them if I can get a nice pincer attack with these Zerglings at the same time, which he could definitely do. He could definitely do that as long as he doesn't keep losing Zerglings. Um, I come in with a nice pincer with the Zerglings and all of his mutas at the same time. Might be doing that soon, but he can't keep losing mutalists like that as he's coming in. I uh, see one of those mutalists is very badly damaged, but he is winding down this um, marine troop. And these marines are on the high ground trying to hold their own, but yeah, it looks like Hydra will be able to get this done now, even though there's only a few marines left. Now Flash taking down one, two more uh, mutalists before this troop goes down. So he got a lot of damage done, even though he lost half of his army. Now he's moving out with the other half. And obviously he has plenty of barracks to supplement this army and keep them going, keep them working out into the map. But once again, Flash is trying to take that high ground area, take the high ground, keep the Zerglings at bay, and make it easier to fend off the Mutalists. Uh, kind of going the long way around there, but that is going to help him out a lot. Um, coming in and be able to do the pincer here if Hydra. Hydra is pushing into the natural expansion, but not all the way. Doesn't push in all the way to take out that bunker or anything. But I think he probably would have been able to get a lot of damage now if he did do that. But he would have left himself open for, open for an attack from Flash at the same time. With Flash coming down. I think Flash either scanned or he has some ep epic star sense. Because he's going straight for the 5 o'clock base that just popped up for Hydra. Which is actually running right now and has the extractor that I see. But now Flash trying to find those mutalists. And now, as I said, Hydra... As he had to do in the last game, he's got to get in there to the resupply lines, uh, kill the resupply units, and keep that force weak in the middle. Oh, doesn't have to keep the force weak anymore. Just got the complete surround with Zerglings, snuck in with those Zerglings to kill all of Flash's troops in the middle. So Flash uh, lost another half of his army, but he's been building up his army again. And there's the Queen's Nest coming up now uh, for Hydra. This is going to be a very big attack, actually, from Hydra coming in with all of his Zerglings and his Lurkers. And he's going to try to come in from the high ground area. It would be very difficult to do that off of the bridge, I think. So this is probably the best way to go, but he's got to get in a good position. Flash being forced back by the Lurkers, but he has a stem there ready to come down and intercept these Zerglings that are trying to run away. 
every little bit counts. I mean, that one little zergling, that's definitely going to help Flash a lot in uh, dealing with a big attack, which Hydra was trying to do. Hydra was trying to do a full frontal attack with every single one of his units, which could have been very deadly if he had come in from a good position. But another f couple of zerglings going down. And the Lurkers still holding their own near the choke of the high ground area near Flash's base. So, Hydra trying to get in position yet again. Three more Zerglings go down. And as you can tell, just those few handful of Zerglings that Flash has, it's making a difference. Just look at the amount of Zerglings that are out there right now uh, to get the pincer attack. And Flash moving out has the tank and the scan. So, uh... Hydra not looking good for him there. And now Fly Hydra is going for his hive as Flash has an enormous amount of troops moving into the middle, sniping more Zerglings where he can snipe them. But he has two tanks and a bunch of medic and marines. This could work out a lot like the first set, actually, because this is going to be a very powerful Terran force uh, working their way down. And I think I saw some uh, lurkers burrowing uh, right next to the natural expansion uh, from Hydra. So maybe this time he can get a stop lurker attack or something that will take Flash off guard. A stop lurker attack would have helped out a lot in the first game if uh, Flash didn't have such such epic star sense to scan. And I don't even know if he scanned or saw the lurker spines first, but either way it was a very quick reaction. But no, the science vessel is out now, so the stop lurker attack will not be effective so Hydra has got to do a big attack, a big pincer attack, and he's got to get it done immediately because Flash is moving down right now. Hydra, he has one chance to do this. Got to get in as quickly as he can with his lurkers, but no, he backs off. Doesn't make use of those lurkers on the left side, but coming in from the right side, he was a little bit too slow, but I think that might have been able to do it. I think that pincer attack might have been able to take Flash down. It certainly spooked Flash a little bit. He's moving back to his reinforcements. Uh, to kill these lurkers before he moves on, but now still a very hefty force from Hydra out on the map. He's focused on these lair tech units before he gets to Hive, and oh man, fitting this back, another nice marine arc from Flash coming in. It's very risky from him, but I think it might pay off. Oh man, taking down all but two lurkers, losing a lot of marines there too, so I do think that Hydra might be able to fight this back after all if he can get in with the lurkers. But his lurkers are so spread out now, and he doesn't really have any at the front uh, to protect himself, except that there's just a couple that are out there completely undefended. you got to keep those lurkers next to the mutilus and everything else, keep them defended, keep the tanks from hitting them with the splash. Oh, man, this is not looking good. Not looking good. So Flash is coming in here now. He does. There's absolutely no static defense at the front, so Hydra has to do this with Dark Swarm. That was uh, epic timing of that Dark Swarm. That Dark Swarm came out just the right time to keep Flash at bay. And now Hydra is building his fourth base, I see, down at the 5 o'clock uh, natural expansion. Going to try to build that, but he needs some lurkers there immediately. Immediately needs lurkers there to protect that base. Luckily, it looks like he's going to come down and be able to do another Dark Swarm of that 5 o'clock natural and protect it here. But Flash is coming in with his science vessels. He's going to radiate the Defiler once he finds it. Uh, the Defiler hasn't come in yet. Where did th those troops go? I have no idea. Well, I think he ran back through the Nidus Canal to pr protect his natural expansion or something. No, he was hanging out on the high ground this entire time. Trying to kill everything. Flash, he loses a lot of troops, but he manages to get up there anyway. And man, I, I really think that Hydra would have been able to protect that natural expansion if he had the um, Dark Swarm on the low ground. But now he's allowed Flash to sneak into this base. Like he might be able to clean it up though. Yeah, it cleans up everything. Only medics left now. And uh, it looks like Hydra is trying to do some Zergling bombs, run those Zerglings close to the tanks. I almost thought he uh, consumed a scourge there for a second, but I do think that was a Zergling. Uh, I'm going to try to protect his front yet again and Flash, doing that same aggressive strategy he had in the first game, just push with everything he has, again, there as quickly as he can. Of course, the quickest units to go down there would be the Vultures, so he's trying to go in with the Vultures. He'll be able to lay mines soon enough. Yep, there's the first mine. So Flash is not going to let up the pressure until he takes out this natural expansion. And, wow, it's going to be tough, tough for Hydra. He doesn't have the troops here yet. He's still morphing more lurkers at the natural expansion. He doesn't have anything down there except for the zerglings, which weren't even aided by the dark swarm. There's one dark swarm at front, but it's not helping at all because Flash uh, getting away from it. And the nice canal goes down. There's a plague, actually, from Hydra. It looks like his plague research just got done. But he loses another lurker at the front. Wasn't even going to get into the dark swarm. 
Uh, a couple more lurkers now. Drop my pop filter, but now the lurker is going down. Flash has done such an epic job in all three games of taking out lurkers. This has been anti-lurker city. And now look at those extra vultures sneaking in now. Completely aggressive attack from Flash. Never even got his third base. Just working from these two the entire time. Uh, to be as aggressive as he possibly could, and it looks like it's going to work out. Oh, I can't even believe it. It, it. In fact, he's going over to harass the 5 o'clock position now. I mean, if Hydra can... I just don't see a way that Hydra can hang on long enough to make use of his 5 o'clock natural expansion that's coming up. Uh, basically on harass. The vultures are down there, but there are some sunken colonies to protect against that. But yeah, GG. Ran out of everything, had no way of protecting his main, and Flash stomps Hydra. That was a stomping of Hydra. Let's hope that Zero puts up a much better fight than that. But your MSL final is going to be Flash versus Zero, which is an excellent final. It's going to be much different than a Jadong versus Flash final, I'll tell you that right now. And I'm looking forward to casting it. So that's been Nuke. I will be back with the MSL finals when it happens. I don't know because I haven't looked at my calendar, but I know what's going to happen. It has to. See you guys later.